toss because they know that if they hang in there, see the new ball through, there certainly is runs on offer as well. Absolutely. T20 game, you don't expect the surface to change much in the space of 40 overs. And I uh, am in the exact same school of thought with the two captains from yesterday and today. Win the toss, bat first on what looks a really good surface. Get some runs on the board and try and put the opposition under pressure, batting second. Zimbabwe yesterday only needed 133 to win. But um, after losing early wickets on a surface that was taking turn, they struggled for the first 10 to 12 overs. It took a good partnership between Richmond Mutumbami, the man of the match, and Ryan Burl to repair the innings and get Zimbabwe across the line. So, uh, as I say, ideal to bat first on the surface, put some runs on the board. We saw a bit more turn in the later innings yesterday. You can expect that from a bowler of the quality of uh, Sandy Blamichani. But definitely the kind of surface that you want to bat first on and put runs on the board. Yeah, absolutely. You just need to hang in there. There certainly is pace and bounce on offer for the medium pacers. Plenty of spin for the spinners. And once you've seen the new ball through, once you've got your Ryan, there is plenty on offer for the batsmen as well. Right, here we go. It's Sompal Kami to start off proceedings from the pavilion end. And Rohan Rangarajan is happy to let the first one go through. He's been in good touch. He's been amongst the runs, is Rohan. It's good. And they rely so much on their top three to the Singaporean team. Rohan Rangarajan, Surendran Chandra Mohan, and obviously the newly appointed captain, Tim Davids. What Paras would want to be doing is target the top three and try to get those early inroads. Absolutely. I won't be surprised if we see him open up with the spinner again like he did yesterday. We've got early breakthroughs for him. And he'll be looking to do the same today. That'll be called wide. So important, those early wickets, in particular because we've talked about the boundaries here. Yes, a lot bigger the boundary square of the wicket. However, the outfield is still very quick. We saw yesterday Richmond Tumbami taking advantage of the shorter, straighter boundaries. But if you're getting wickets early in those first six overs, it means you're pegging the batsman back and they're not playing with freedom. Good cricket, good single. We saw Brian Cherry yesterday very effective in the first couple of overs. Wasn't hitting the ball over the field, was hitting it through square boundaries. But because the outfield is that quick, he took advantage of that. It's really important, this first stage, to try and make sure that you peg the batsman back. And how do you do that? By getting early wickets. Sompal Kami was certainly in the thick of things yesterday, not just with the ball, certainly with the bat as well. Fantastic hitting right at the end of the first innings. Helped Nepal reach a respectable total. Fortunately, it wasn't good enough. And he's been tasked with the job of getting the early wickets. Captain Paris Kartka. I won't be surprised if he resorts to spin very soon, like Tino mentioned. Good length from Sompal. We saw yesterday... When the seamers pitched the ball up, yes, a bit of movement. But the batsmen were a lot happier trying to take them on. Paras Kadka batting first yesterday. Missed out on a few deliveries, but certainly when the ball was pitched up, the batsmen were very happy to throw their hands at it. Took the bowlers some time to realize that it's probably better just to pull that length back a little bit. And I think Sompal started well in that regard today. These two teams will obviously know each other well. Play each other quite often. 
be a good encounter. In the air. And doesn't quite carry to the captain. Paras Kadka at mid-off. Diving effort from him. We saw them in the field yesterday. Energetic dives, direct hits. Unfortunately, this time not quite able to take that catch. It almost felt like Surendra and Chandramohan was a little late on that shot. And the ball kept climbing on him. So all he could manage was to lob it up to mid-off. Gave me the feeling that Paras took a step, couple of steps backward and that, and that meant it got a lot more difficult for him to get to the ball. Much better. A very disciplined effort from Sompal Kami in the first over. We come to end. We come to the end of the first over and Singapore four for no loss. Change in tactics for Nepal here. It was Sandeep Lamichani who started off at the far end with the new ball yesterday. It's going to be Karan Casey. Seam from both ends today. And it's going to be Rohan Rangarajan on strike. Big appeal. That'll be going down the leg side. Run out opportunity. Not being able to get the direct hit. Bowler not able to get back to the stumps in time. Just a bit of shape into the right-hander. These two teams have obviously seen each other quite often. And the last time they faced off against each other was the final of the Asia T20 qualifiers in Singapore. We're all over Nepal in that game, winning by 82 runs, courtesy a remarkable performance with the bat. Tim David, the captain, led from the front, 77 of just 43 deliveries. This could just run over to the boundary. Yes, the first boundary of the game, drifting towards the leg side on this occasion, Karan Casey, and he puts it away. First boundary for Surendra and Chandra Mohan. This could just run over to the boundary. Play. Yes, the first boundary. And at 45 is in the circle. So all he needs to do is get that past that man. Man on the leg side, on the boundary, is deep back with square leg. And talked about this quick outfield. All he needed to do was just make sure he evaded that man at 45. He did that well. But the boundary, this is good cricket. And those of you that were with us yesterday... Well, remember, we talked several times about how important it was for the top order of Nepal when they weren't getting boundaries to make sure that they were still rotating the strike. It was the Achilles heel in the beginning of the innings yesterday, and they repaired it well towards the end. But this is good to see from Singapore. Again, looking for that single. Soft hands into the offside. Good communication between the two batsmen. A good start for both these teams today. Disciplined effort by both the bowlers so far. Not giving away too many extras. Just relying on just good conventional line and length right outside the off stump. And the batsmen are happy to tuck it away for singles. Rotate the strike. Much better from Karan Casey. Both these teams know that they would want to capitalize on this power play, so they don't mind starting a little slowly because they know that once they get their eye in, this pitch will certainly have plenty to offer for the batsmen. 
Certainly will. Rangarajan is not one I've seen a lot of, but looks like he definitely likes to stay leg side of the ball, which means that he's possibly a guy who scores through the offside well. Runs through the onside. Come back for two. Good running once again by uh, the Singapore pair. End of the second over, 12 for no loss. It's going to be Sompal Kami to continue from the pavilion end. Good running between the wickets there. Rohan and Surendran. They saw the opportunity for two runs there. Massive gaps on the leg side. And they're capitalizing on that. Two valuable runs. I've been impressed by... Uh the running between the wickets between these two, the communication between the two of them. Yes, it's T20 cricket. You want a flashing start. You want boundaries. You want excitement. But in all of that, it's so important to ensure that when there's opportunities to take singles, drop the ball into the gap to do so. Keep the scoreboard ticking over. Just the one boundary not from the first couple of overs, 14 on the board already. Looks for the big heave over mid-wicket. Was lucky that that didn't go straight to mid-on. On the bounce, well done there at mid-on by Kushal Malla. Did well to stop that. It's never easy when it bounces right in front of you. Dangerous here from Surendran. Yeah. I think we need to give him uh, a lot of credit at mid-on there. And that was hit hard, flat. And went straight to the man and bouncing just before him. Never easy, as you say. Again, on the opportunities, not there to get a boundary, looking for the single. Good cricket. Well, if you look at just the approach right before the ball is being bowled from both Rohan and Surendra and Tino, minimal foot movement relying on very good hand-eye coordination to make good contact with the ball, but it's working well for them. For those of you just tuning in, this is match number two of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20I brought to you by Instagram. Zimbabwe got the better of Nepal in match number one. They won the game last evening by five wickets. Man of the match, Richmond Mutumbami, led from the front for Zimbabwe. An opportunity here. Is this the first wicket? A valiant effort at point there. We're just too far off from him. And it's Rohan Rangarajan this time. Let's take a quick look at this once again. It's a valiant effort. Just a bit of extra bounce again. Back of a length. Had this yesterday and today. That's the leading edge looking to play through the onside and a really good effort. That backward point. I like the energy of these uh, Nepalese boys on the field. Leave nothing to chance. Wonderful direct hit for a run out yesterday. And in general, just good energies in the field. For all the Singapore fans tuning in, there obviously is a change made in this team. Amjad Mehboob is not the captain today. He isn't playing today. And for the very first time, it's going to be Tim Davids leading the Singapore team onto the field. Had the opportunity to chat with him at the toss earlier today. Was very excited with the new role. Flat batted swat over covers. 
Ashley in boundary there. Much more convincing from Rohan Rangarajan there. Let's take another look at this. There was width on offer. Short outside off. And that was good enough for Rohan to put it away. Three overs completed in Singapore. 22 for no loss. For folks tuning in from around the world, you have plenty of options to be watching live coverage of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20i. The fan code app by Dream11, Velo TV HD, VC Sports, and obviously the, fan, the Facebook handle of the Singapore Cricket Association as well. So plenty of options. Fantastic work by the Singapore Cricket Association to make this tournament happen. There's an appeal. It looks like it's out. Yes. And Rohan's making the long walk back. Karan Casey, excellent delivery that. Did enough off the pitch to take the outside edge. Regulation catch for the keeper there. A nice delivery. Just angled into the right-hander, shaped away. Just getting the outside edge. We've seen him a couple of times looking to hit that ball through the onside. Had a lucky break in the last over when that ball didn't carry to the man at backward point. But this time... Comfortably taken. Good catch. And that's the end of uh, Rangarajan for six. 22 for one, Singapore. It's going to be their star batsman and also the newly appointed captain of Singapore, Timothy David. Tim Davids, who's going to make his way to the centre. Apologies for the graphics there. That obviously wasn't Tim Davids, Tino. No, it wasn't. But this is at the crease. One wicket down, and a good player, Tim Davids. We called wide. He's, a, he's had the opportunity to represent the Perth Scotchers in the Big Bash League as well, so plenty of T20 experience. Absolutely. There we go. Timothy David. Big, strong, energetic batter. Nice, good, solid strokes. And he's off the mark. Well, just when the, two when the two Singapore batsmen seem to be set, Karan Casey comes up with a peach of a delivery to remove Rohan Rangarajan. Just did enough off the pitch to get that edge. Binod Bandari made no mistake. Wickets are going to hold the key here. And a good slot from Surendra Chandra Mohan once again. We saw a bit of that from Paras Katka last evening. And he's fancying the smaller, the shorter mid-wicket boundaries. That's probably on his mind, you know. Absolutely. He's shown uh, a keenness to try and hit the ball over the onside when the ball's a bit pitched up and a little bit straighter. Again, looking to go over that onside field. 
And it's actually gone for four. Thought they were just going to get a couple there. But enough on that to get over the boundary. Thick inside edge. Takes the score to 28. With a couple of balls to go in the fourth over. It's been that kind of all or nothing sort of innings from Surendran Chandramohan there. He probably will get himself two more runs, yes. He's swatting it hard. Isn't necessarily coming out of the meat of the bat. 20 or 12. And I think that's what's most important. Runs on the board. Early in the innings, 30 for one now, a ball to go in the fourth over. They won't mind how those runs come, Singapore, as long as they do. Better connection, but this time straight to the man at mid-wicket. End of the fourth over, 30 for one. Sompal Kami is going to continue with his third over from the pavilion end. 14 conceded in the first two and he's going to be bowling to the captain, Tim Davids, for the first time. Very disciplined effort from the Nepali bowlers today. Surendran Chandramohan, he's living a little dangerously, isn't he, Tino? He is indeed. He's really looking to get on with things. Just a couple of overs to go until the end of uh, six-over power play. And he's wanting to take as much advantage of uh, his last deliveries as possible. Cut away straight to the man. Now in the back of their minds, we talked about how often these two teams play against each other against each other for uh, the last spot for the World T20 qualifiers in Dubai next month. They will know how dangerous Lamichani is. They would have watched him last night. And in the back of their minds, they're thinking, those are going to be four very difficult overs to get through. Let's try and get as many as we can off the other bowlers. Beautifully driven. Very ordinary effort on the field there. Straight through the cover's legs and that runs away for a boundary. Gifting four runs to Tim Davids here. Doesn't matter how they come, as long as they come. A good-looking conventional cover drive went straight through the fielder's legs there. Very interesting tactics from Paras Katka. We haven't seen... We're into the fifth over. So they've obviously discussed this thoroughly. Have the Nepal team with the management because they ran through Lamichani's overs in the first seven overs yesterday and we still haven't seen him bowl today. So interesting tactics. Good running and good fielding again from Nepal. Good pick up. And I think Tim David could have been in trouble here had that ball hit the stumps direct. However, Lives to see another day. I'm sure that conversation will be about. Let's just be careful. These guys are quick in the field. Accurate with their throws. No need to get an unnecessary run out at this stage. That was Arif Sheikh at mid-wicket. And boy, was he quick. Quick to get to the ball and even quicker to release. Shot 
Outside off and he makes enough contact to get himself another boundary. Surendran Chandra Mohan is starting to express himself here. And he will have to say that he's been a bit lucky once again. It's just brute force and he's trying to muscle the ball and he does exactly that this time on the offside. Two bounces and then it rolls over the boundary line. Now taking advantage of that room on the offside. Another one who likes to stay leg side of the ball. So any sort of width is exaggerated by that. In this stage, obviously, just the two men back on the boundary. Deep backwards, square leg and third man. Deep backwards come up now and the sweep has gone back on the offside because of that shot. This time, bang, straight back over the bowler's head. And that's the first six of the day. He's gone slightly shorter in length, Sumpal. And this one, he's got a meaty connection. Five overs gone, 45 for one. One over to go in the power play. Singapore have lost one wicket, but they've made some steady progress. 45 for one. New captain, Timothy David, very fresh at the crease. Just six from five. But uh, Chandra Mohan has been getting on with the business at the other end. 30 from just 15 balls. 200% strike rate and looking good. We're wondering when he was going to come into the attack. Lamichane and straight away turn. My good friend Nav has just popped out the commentary box and I'm joined by Adrian Abraham for the first time in the series. Abraham, good to have you. Uh, good evening, good evening and uh, welcome to this game today where, um, yeah, great shot there. Timothy David really starting to get a move on here. Sandy Blamachane not getting his line right there. Smashed away to the boundary. Uh, they're very unlike Sandy Blamachane, one guy who quite often comes in, gets it right from ball one. Lots of purchase from him from this wicket last night. And we saw that already from the first ball today. Tim David, lots of experience. I would have faced him a lot. You'll know the, how important it is to ensure that Sandy Blamichani doesn't get wickets and breakthroughs, especially early on in the innings. No run there by Tim David. Interesting story, to be fair. Uh, Tim David plays his cricket with the uh, Perth Scorchers in the Big Bash. And... Um, yeah, he was born in Singapore, moved to Australia when he was really young, and now captaining the side for the first time tonight. Big day for him. Absolutely. Direct it again, and this could be trouble. Umpire not interested. No, we've talked countless times last night, today, about how often the Nepal fielders hit the stumps. Quick single and decided to get on and move on it pretty quickly. He was home comfortably in the end. But again, something to bear in mind and consider for these uh, Singapore batters. They're very sharp, aren't they? The fielders from Nepal. Oh, beauty of the delivery. Decent first over. Six gone, 50 for one.
So the power play is done. 50 for 1. Singapore, and they'll be quite happy with their progress. Timothy David, 11 from 10. Surendran Chandra Mohan, 30 from 16. Be a change in the bowling. Sushan Bari has just come on to bowl. Timothy uh, Timothy David still still there, taking his time now. Just eased away for a single there. Twelve from ten. But Surinder and Chandra Mohan really getting a move on at the other end. Thirty from sixteen. He's looked good. Quite a few shots in the air, more explosive appro uh, approach to um, his batting. We've seen Timothy David be a little bit cautious. However, Chandra Mohan really starting to express himself. Uh, Tim Davids just brings that sense of calmness to the innings. Yes, it's T20 cricket and you want to get on with things. But also lots of opportunity to build partnerships and to be explosive later on in the innings, and just from what I've seen from him today. Very cool, calm, collected character. Fits the role of a number three batter. Tim David says no to the run there. In fact, the, the last time these two played was right here in Singapore, when um, Singapore won by 82 runs. And on that day, it was, um, Timothy Head, he top scored with 77, just the number on the back of his shirt. Interestingly, both captains actually with number 77 on the back of their shirts today. The other one, Paras Kadka, of course, the uh, Nepalese captain. Bang! Good shot. He'll find the boundary at extra cover. Just a bit of width given on that occasion. And uh, Chandra Mohan more than happy to put that away to the boundary. Good shot Bang. at the end of the seventh over. 55 Good shot. He'll find the boundary at extra cover. Lamichani continues. It's a googly. Well picked by Tim David. Happy just to pick off Lamichani, Tim David. We talked about how he'll understand that it's really important that Lamichani doesn't get wickets. If they take him at five and over and doesn't get wickets, happy days. Tim David says no to a run there. Chandra Mohan is quick to get off the mark, but the captain sent him back. He likes to play his shots, doesn't he? I was about to say, it comes across to me as a bit of a hit and miss. Not too many singles in between there. Looks like he's one that likes to muscle the ball away. And if he doesn't get it away, then very difficult for him, I think, to rotate the strike, get himself to the other end.
Nice little start by Singapore, 56 for one, 7.3 overs. The captain, Timothy David, out in the middle with Surendra and Chandra Mohan. Beautifully bowled. Absolute peach. He's just given it a little bit more air and just pulled the length back. Sandeep Blamichani. And you could see Chandra Mohan looking to play that big stroke again. And absolutely bamboozled on this occasion. The captain's just having a few words with him there to tell him to just pick off the ball. Great ball there. Lamachane really finding his rhythm, his line and length now, getting into the groove. Unable to play his shots as he was with the other bowlers. A single to end the eighth. Hold him. Looking to pepper that onside boundary once again. And we saw this in the last couple of overs that uh, when he wasn't getting across to the other end, rotating the strike, he looked like he was uh, a bit of a hit or miss. However, it has been a good innings. 35 from 26. Just one shot too many. Just too, too, too many big shots. I mean, he was really getting frustrated not being able to pick Sandeep Lamachane. And now he falls. Sushan Bari picks up his first wicket. Singapore, 57 for two after 8.1 overs. New man in for Singapore, Manpreet Singh. Explosive player himself. Comes in and joins uh, the new captain, Timothy David. He's on 13 from 13, looking very steady from the other end. Now will be looking to build another partnership. Half decent start for Singapore, 57 for two. One ball into the ninth over. Paul feel like they have a sniff here. The big, the big hitting Chandra Mohan. He's gone. Manpreet Singh, like you mentioned, joined his captain out in the middle. Explosive player. Made 40 odd from 17 balls the last time these two made. Really likes to play his shots. But a more cautious approach today. Trying to see off Sushan Bari, the spinner. Calls for a quick single there. Oh, bit sloppy, the Nepalese fielder there. You can just see Singapore have started to slow down a bit from the, um, from the initial stages. And Chandra Mohan was out in the middle. Just the last two overs, they've seemed to, Nepal have pulled it back. And that wicket certainly, certainly does help. And you can expect that. Field is spread now. That buzz of uh, the first six overs is gone. 
This is a period where the team wants to ensure that they can build partnerships, get through this period with a minimum of loss of wickets, and come in at the end of the innings and make sure that they capitalize and get themselves to a good score. Partnership is key over here. As Timothy Davids takes strike. Oh, steps out. Big. How big? He's, it's out of here. It's huge. Sixty-four for two after nine overs. Oh, steps out. Big. How big? He's, it's out of here. Sixty-four for two, after nine overs. Bowling change here. Kushal Mala comes into the attack. Another spinner. We're seeing. We didn't see them in the initial stages, and now they're coming. Quite quickly. Huge six from Timothy Head, just to finish off that over. Just as we were talking about them slowing down, the captain steps up, smashes it out of the stadium. Spin the way to go on the surface. We saw it last night after the seamers came on early. Got a bit of a way shape. And definitely some purchase for the spinners on the surface. It's well fielded by the captain, Paras Kadka, at extra cover. Manpreet Singh wanted the single there, but his captain was quick to send him back. One from four. Just over the man. He'll tell you that uh, I did that on purpose and made sure that I plonked it over his head and got the single. Initially thought it went straight back to him there for a minute. Really wanted to just get a move on, but he can breathe, it. He can breathe easier now. He's at the non-striker's end as the captain takes strike. 19 from 15. Looked good. Looked very good. Calm, composed, controlled, really building an innings here. He'll want Manpreet Singh to just stay there with him. Goes again. Has he got it? It's out of here again. Timothy Head. This is good batting from uh, Tim David. You want to play a lot of cricket here and realizes that uh, these straight boundaries he can take advantage of. And this time again, a little bit of air and comes down Goes the wicket. Again. Gets to the pitch of it. And gives it, it uh, a good heave hope well over again. the bowler's head. Timothy head. And with both the sixes, we've seen that he's not afraid to step down the track. You know, really likes to express himself. 25 from 16. Timothy David really building his innings now. As Kushal Mala comes back in. Where's the captain goes? Just a single. Moved along to uh, 26 from 17. Starting to look dangerous, Timothy David. Cut away will just be the single. 73. The ball to go to the halfway stage. Singapore will be pretty happy with the proceeding so far. Dealing in singles, says Manpreet Singh, as Timothy David does the majority of the work out here. Steps out again. Only be a single up. The misfield will send it back. 
End of the tenth over, 74 for two Singapore. It's the halfway stage of the first innings of game two in the Singapore Tri-Nations, powered by Instarim. Singapore have moved happily along to 74 for two. And we're going to have a change in voice in the commentary box. It's going to be Navneet Krishna, and he's going to be joined by a special guest this evening, Sean Williams. Thank you, Dino. Thank you, Adrian. Match right in the balance, you'd probably have to say, at the halfway mark. Singapore 74 for two. Lucky enough to be in the commentary box with the captain of the Zimbabwean team, Sean Williams. And he has a bright smile on his face. No surprise, obviously. Good performance by Zimbabwe yesterday. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you for having me in the commentary box. Thank you for having me in here. Yeah, it's exciting to be in Singapore and nice to come and watch a live game here tonight. For a second, I was assuming that you and the rest of the team will probably be enjoying the sights of Singapore and be out and about, but you have you chose to be here. What's the game, Sean? Yeah, obviously, I haven't played on this wicket before, so other than last night. So I thought I'd come out and see how the Singapore, Singapore boys play out here. Um, obviously, it being short boundaries, you know, I'd like to see how, how they go, go about their batting and, and obviously their bowling as well. Obviously, last night, the ball was spinning a lot, so... Um, Ryan Bill and Mutambami got us out of quite a bit of trouble last night and you know we'd like to avoid those issues again in tomorrow's match against Singapore. Very interesting, a couple of points that you alluded to here. We'll start with the spin aspect that you spoke about. There is plenty of spin on offer on this pitch but having said that there are a few spinners where it hasn't done much as well. Yes, definitely. Obviously, um, you know, you've got to put something on it to be able to get something out of it on this type of wicket. Um, it's a type of wicket that you've got to go bowl back of a length pretty quick and, and really give it a good rip. So, uh, j just to be able to get something out of the wicket. If you're going to just put it up there, you know, obviously the batsmen are going to take you on on the, on the straight boundaries. So, in order to get them to hit you where you want them to, to hit the ball, I, I obviously square of the wicket is where you want them to hit it. So... That's obviously going to be the plans, and if you look at Sandeep, the way he's bowling, he's bowling quite quite quick into the wicket and back of a length, um, and the guys have struggled to face him. So, you know, we're going to have to make a plan to to find a way how to play that type of bowling. And you were pretty economical yourself, Sean. You bowled your quota of four overs. You managed to get a couple of wickets as well. So you must be happy bowling on this pitch. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, when you get an opportunity to bowl on a wicket like this, you're going to take full advantage of it. Um, you know, obviously, accuracy is a big thing in T20 cricket, and that's something that our bowlers are, are learning at the moment. And like Wellington Mazakadza, as soon as he starts to spin the ball, I think he's going to be a very dangerous bowler. And then you've got young Tino Mutumbozi as well. I think he's an, a very exciting talent for Zimbabwe cricket. Obviously, he didn't go too well with the bat last night, but I feel you know he's got a lot to offer, and um, he has leadership qualities as well. And it's interesting you bring that up, Sean. you obviously captaining the Zimbabwean team um, right after Hamilton Mazakatsa. Talk to us about that final game in Bangladesh against Afghanistan. That must have been quite a farewell for the captain. Yeah, it was a goosebump moment, wasn't it? It was a goosebump moment for all of us and a sad, a sad moment for all of us as uh, obviously we've grown up with him you know, throughout our entire careers, obviously, you know, guys like Tino, myself, uh, Brendan, you know, we've played with him for a very long time. And to see him go now, obviously, there's a big a big gap in the team that he's left behind. Um, you know, someone's got to come in and fill some big boots there. So um, good luck to whoever's going to come in there and take that opportunity. And hopefully, hopefully um, someone raises their hand very soon and, and does that job. Obviously, we've got Regis in there now. We've got an exciting young player in Brian Chari as well, attacking, not scared of anything. So... You know, it's it's obviously 
it's time to move forward now. Um, you know, Hamilton has given a lot to Zimbabwe cricket, and, and I'm sure he'll continue to do so. And you're enjoying your role as captain of Zimbabwe? I'm loving it. It's really exciting. Yeah. Obviously, I've got a lot to learn still. You know, um, not having Brendan or Craig or, or any of those experienced players around, I'm, I'm a little bit on my own, but, you know, I've been around for a while. So, you know, I've got the coaches, we have our plans, and we stick to our plans and follow them. And, yeah, it's exciting, and I'm loving it. Very quickly, back to the live action here. It's Sandeep Lanjani into his third over from the far end. And he does what he does so often, uh, beat the outside edge. Quite a sensation has been in the recent past, Sandeep Lamachani. Been playing T20 cricket all across the world, some of the biggest leagues. And he continues to bamboozle the batsmen all over. Manpreet Singh looking for the sweep down the leg side. Had to reach out for that. And we saw most of the batsmen resorting to the sweep shot yesterday as well. Because bowlers are preferring to bowl short rather than full only because of the shorter straight boundaries as well. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, if you bowl it quicker into the wicket, uh, back of a length, it, it becomes difficult for, for a batsman to use their feet to, to enable to target that straight boundary. So, you know, it's a plan of ours. And, and obviously, with the ball spinning and balancing, the sweep shot actually becomes a wicket-taking option for us. So... Obviously, on a, on a small field like this, you've got to get your angles right uh, for your field placings and stuff. Um, we've seen Tim come down twice now to balls that are not spinning. So, you know, it's, it's, it's signs for, for some batsmen to maybe, you know, target that bowler. Um, in particular, the left arm spinner that he, he, you could see he was starting to target him. So, you know, and that could be the game changing over in T20 cricket. As you know, there's fine margins. So, so yeah, I think if you, if you, if you try and... You know, spend a little bit of time at, at the crease, especially on this pitch. It'll open up the game towards the end of the innings when the seamers come back on as well. And this is probably the way to go against Sandeep Lamichani. Nine in the first 2.4 overs. They're okay playing him out. You don't have to try anything or try to be adventurous against Sandeep Lamichani. You're okay giving the 15 or 20 to his four overs. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you don't want to give him any wickets. That, that would be my main thing. And um, a rotation of the strike, as you can see there, as they just knock him, in, knock him into the leg side and pick up two, uh, that's, that would be a, a very good goal to have against him. You know, if you can pick up 20 to 30 runs in his four overs without a wicket, I think you, you're on the right track, and then you can target another one of their spinners. How about moving just a little away from the cricket, Sean? Have you been enjoying your little time here in, in Singapore? I've loved it. Obviously, the humidity is not as, as bad as Bangladesh, which is it's really hot there and tough to play cricket under those conditions. So coming from there to here has, has been a pleasure. Um, obviously, I haven't had much time to do, do too much around Singapore because of, because of um, training and games and stuff like that. But... Yeah, all in all, first time here, but loving it. 12 overs completed. Eight overs remaining here in the first innings. And in Singapore have 82 on the board. Probably a good time for them to push on the accelerator. The captain, the newly appointed captain, Tim David, in the center, 30 of 23. And he's leading the charge for Singapore here. Talking about newly appointed captain, talk to us about your first time when you were given the opportunity to lead Zimbabwe, Sean, how was that? It was exciting for me. Obviously, when I got the call to tell me that this was going to happen, I was obviously shocked and a bit caught off guard. But um, I wasn't going to let an opportunity like that go. Obviously, you know, you want to leave a legacy behind, and, and that's what I would like to do. Um, you know, with a young team coming up and coming through, I've ov we've obviously got some world-class players. I, I truly believe there's a lot of talent in Zimbabwe and also in the current team at the moment. You look at Ryan Bull, Mutumbudzi, uh, Timson Maruma, even Richmond Mutumbami. And we've got a young man, Tony, as well, who hasn't actually played. He's played two games, but he hasn't had a chance to bat or bowl yet. So, you know, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of players to come through. So... But again, it's exciting and all those decisions obviously weigh on your shoulders and um, a lot points at you at the end of every game. But 
with the captaincy comes performance and uh, you would like to perform and be that person to take the team home. Um, obviously last night I was disappointed I got out first ball but as you can see Tim tonight he's taking on the opportunity and, and looks like he's loving it. He's, um, he wants to be the one that takes the team all the way through to the 20th over and that's, that's a good thing for me to, to, to see. A change in the bowling attack. It's that man again, Avinash Bora, into his second over. You obviously saw a bit of him in yesterday's game. Needless to say, he is possibly going to continue the legacy of the great Lasit Malinga. Okay, this man, slingy action, loves bowling his yorkers, targeting those toes. Yeah, he, he, he looks like a very promising bowler for Nepal. I think um, you know, he's obviously very accurate and he can change of pace. Having said that, guess what Tim Davids does? Tonks him over mid-wicket for a massive six and Tim's absolutely loving this. No grounds big enough for the big Having Tim Davids. Having said that. I'll tell you something, the Indian Association here in Singapore is nowhere close to big enough. Tim Davids is hitting it big and it's hitting it long. 92 for 2 now into the 13th over and the captain, 37 of 25. That must give him plenty of confidence and possibly the momentum that they need going into the final 7 overs. Yeah, definitely. I, I think maybe he's got his angles wrong here. I think maybe coming over the wicket and going into leg stump would be the better option for me. Um, obviously, he's going to clear his front leg and take on the short boundary straight there. So... You know, maybe a, a short pitch ball or hard into the deck would be a good option right now. Um, to me, it looks like they've gone gone for the death death option a little bit too soon right now. Um, you know, maybe just stick stick to your guns and try and get a wicket, especially get Tim out now, and it could change change the game totally and bring get two new batsmen at the crease and the game's turned on its head. Very sensible here from the captain. Mighty six over mid wicket, and then what he does the next ball, he's happy to tuck it down on to the leg side for a single and get off strike. Very sensible. And Manpreet Singh, how important has his role been in this partnership? 10 of 15, happy to play second fiddle. And he's okay with the captain, Tim, Le Tim Davids, taking charge. Talk to us a little bit about this tournament, Sean. It is obviously six league games. There is no final. How do you approach a tournament like this? Uh, obviously, it's our first time coming into a tournament like this without having a final. Um, you know, obviously, we want to win every game and win every game uh, as comfortable as possible. So he, we take it game by game and take it step by step and just follow our processes and, and stick to our plans for as long as possible. Execution is obviously key when it comes down to the skills and onto the on the field stuff. Um, Rest is extremely important in a, in a T20 tournament like this when you have games so close to each other. Um, it takes a lot out of you, a T20 game, game funny enough. You know, bowlers are bowling quick through their, quickly through their overs and some fielders are going from long on to long on, cow corner to cow corner. So, yeah, it's just nice. It's nice to, ha to have a tournament that's short and quick, but at the same time, you've got to be clever about your rest and your recovery and your stretching and, and just all the basics about, about cricket. Yeah, so it's not just about advancing to the latter half of a tournament in any given tournament that you play, but it's also about the match practice, the exposure at the international level that's going to do the boys a world of good. Yes, exactly. And obviously there's pressures that come with that, you know, in the, during the game, during training and that you don't really have those pressures. Um, in a game, you've got the crowd, you've got the umpires, you've got the lights on all of a sudden. You know, things, things change. All of a sudden, um, you can't hear anything, you can't seem to think. You know, so we try and try and train under those conditions, but it's obviously difficult to. So, having come from Bangladesh to here, a lot of our boys, which have come from there, obviously have dealt with that and and felt those pressures. As we saw last night, Ryan Bill and Mutum Bami, they soaked up the pressure for us so nicely that it, it was such a good thing to see uh, for us moving forward as a team. Just that card that you just saw on your screen is an indication of how Singapore have gone about this innings. 
useful partnerships right from the very beginning and they find themselves in a pretty decent platform to go big in the final six overs. 22, 35 and 37 this partnership. Down the track, Tim Davids again. Ah, oh, Almost overran did the long on fielder. Can afford to smile because he have manages to stop it. 150, 160 on the cards, Sean. Yeah, definitely. Look, I think I think this is the over that Tim's going to look to take on here. I think they'll both probably try and go. Maybe um, Manpreet will try and give get one here and get Tim back on strike. Um, obviously, actually, he might have got away with the boundary there. No, he's got two. But definitely, this looks like the over that they're going to target here. Um, if they get a good 15 to 20 runs this over, you might even be looking at closer to 200. Singapore scored 191 the last time these two teams played in the final of the Asia T20 qualifiers. Excellent. A good-looking cover drive there. Confident-looking Manpreet Singh. And it was that man, Tim David, who led the charge on that day as well. 73 in just 44 deliveries. 14 overs completed, 99 for two. Right, you're watching live pictures of match number two of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20. I brought to you by Instagram. Plenty of options for you to find live coverage. We see sports, Willow HD TV, Facebook handle of Singapore Cricket Association and the, f the fan code app by Dream11 as well. We have a decent crowd in for today. Obviously, a very good Nepali contingent here in, in Singapore. And no surprises as to why we have a good crowd in today. The home team, Singapore, are in action. It's not often that they get to see their team play here. So they've come out in decent numbers. Manpreet Singh, he's been doing this all through the innings. He's happy to hand over the strike back to Timothy Davids. And with just six overs left... We might just see Tim David shift a gear or two. Six league matches in this tournament. Each team plays the other teams once each. Twice, in fact. My apologies. Full toss. Straight back past the bowler. And stopped by the captain, Paras Katka. Yeah. Tri-Nation series. Each team plays the other two teams twice. A total of six matches. Remember, there is no final. So we have six league games. But plenty of match practice for all the three teams here. Wayward delivery by current Casey down the leg side. And the umpire is happy to stretch his arms. Wide signal. Sean, what do you think were your key takeaways from last night's game? I think we started off really well with the ball. Um, we obviously put pressure on them very early on. They didn't manage to get a boundary. Well, they, they got a few boundaries, but they were still a scoring rate that we had. Uh, I thought our fielding was really good. I was really impressed with that. Um, and in the middle period as well, we... Up goes the umpire's finger. Against the run of play, Manpreet Singh misses a straight one and he will have to make the long walk back to the pavilion. 
Karan Casey strikes again and that's wicket number two. This is probably one Nepal needed at the moment. They need to get some wickets to stop the stem of runs. Quick look at this ball once again. Missed the straight one and the umpire, no hesitation whatsoever in lifting the finger. And that's wicket number three, 102 for three Singapore. Right, it's going to be Janak Prakash, the new batsman for Singapore. We've heard a lot about him. Talented all-rounder for Singapore. Always contributing with the bat, with the ball. And his job will probably be to give Tim Davids enough of support for the rest of the innings. And he's off the mark straight away, pushes it down the ground for a single. And that brings the captain, Tim David, back on strike. Sean, captaining Zimbabwe or sitting in the comp box, which do you think pressurizes you a lot more? Tino always has a, has a thing or two to say, doesn't he? <laughs> it's fantastic to have you in the commentary box, Sean. As we come to the end of over number 15, Sean, all the very best for tomorrow's game against Singapore. Cheers, Sean. Thank you. And I'll see you around tomorrow. Cheers. Tino was completed. Singapore 104 for three. And it's going to be Tino back with me in the commentary box. Right, we're down to the final quarter of the first innings. And Tim David advances down the track, looking for that big one. Sushan Bari didn't play yesterday, comes in instead of Sandeep Jora today. A very disciplined effort from him. He got that first wicket, 19 into his fourth over. Captain Paris will take that. Absolutely. Sweep shot and a good sweep shot. He had to make sure then he got it square of the man at 45 and fine. The man at deep back with square leg. He did that with consummate ease. That's sliding down the leg side very quickly. Onto one knee and puts it away comfortably for a boundary. 
Excellent looking sweep shot there from Janak Prakash. They will want to get a move on here. 109 with a little less than five overs left. They would probably target the 150 mark. You know, you think 150 is probably good enough for Singapore against the decent-looking Nepal batting lineup? Well, I was just going to say, I think uh, 150, they'll be disappointed with, especially if uh, Captain Timothy David bats the majority of these last overs. Is 150 enough? It possibly could be. But I think they'll be targeting 160-plus from here. Especially if uh, Timothy David bats the majority of these remaining four overs after this one. And you can see him starting to open up already. He's eyeing the boundaries on the leg side. Fancies himself against the left arm spin of Sushal Bari. Down the track once again. Swats it hard straight to long on this time. Just a single though. A very disciplined effort from Sushant Bari. Considering that this was just this is just his first game, Paras Katka will be quite happy. And there you go, the quick high fire as well. 16 overs completed. Right, we're down to the final four overs of the first innings and a change in the commentary box as well. A very familiar voice in this part of the world. Shezad Huck, welcome. And he's going to be giving company to Tino for the remainder of this innings. Thanks very much, Nuff. And uh, good to be with my man, Tino, here. Good to be uh, involved here with this tri-series. That's a lovely swat, isn't it? Some might say agricultural. Do you know you play those kind of shots ever in your time? Are you more uh, orthodox? Yard, yeah. In the backyard, Dick. <laughs> I think uh, I've been seen playing shots like that in test match cricket. I wouldn't be in the lineup. That, that might be it for you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good to have you. Yeah, I'm very. You in a of days. Yeah, I, I thought I'd drop by. Um, come, come, keep you guys company. I've been enjoying watching you, watching the uh, cricket, listening to you guys. And um, this is very big for Singapore cricket, of course, having the likes of uh, Zimbabwe and Nepal. And um, having test players commentating with us gives us a, yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling. Have you made, what have you made so far of the way Singapore have been batting? As that is, has that gone all the way? No, it's a four. But he's happy to play any kind of shot, isn't he? At this stage, it looks like they really want to get a move on. Just before you came in, we were talking about what they would be happy with as a total. With Nav, and uh, I just alluded to the fact that I thought that 150 would be something that they'll be disappointed with. Especially if uh, Tim David continues in the vein that he's in. 18 already, just two more into the 16th over, so I think they're targeting 160, 170 plus, and they can get that. In the air. Oh, that's the just got. All the way. Look out, a spectator. Janak uh, clearly been brought in to just help accelerate things, perhaps. Absolutely. Definitely a man on a mission. Prakash, 16 from just six deliveries. Doesn't look like uh, he wants to hang around. 124 for three now, halfway through the 17th over. And that's, that's good for Timothy as well, isn't it? Because he was getting the bulk of the boundaries earlier. Wow, wouldn't you know it? He does do singles. <laughs> yeah. you know, sorry, sorry, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> try and take on his, uh, the bowlers as much as possible. He's good cricket. In between uh, those big hits, you certainly need to make sure that you're rotating that strike. Two balls to go in the over. 12 from it already. 
ready. That's been a very good over for Singapore. And Tim now facing. Can he continue this big hitting that we've seen so far? Just the one. Oh, it's a misfield. Not something that you want to be seeing from a Nepali perspective. And um, it, it just gets a bit frustrating, doesn't it? F teammates will just get a little bit. It's not what you need right now. Especially at this stage of the inning, yep. what I was going to say. He's been pretty good in the field, though. When you look at the, them last night, you look at them today. Mm. They look like they're a very energetic outfit. Get around in the field. And that's what would irk the bowler even more when they uh, have a misfield because he knows the quality of field that he's got. And it's a good ball to finish the over. 17 gone, 127 for three. Still lots of batting to come, as you just saw. Three overs left, though. Singapore in a very nice position, I would, I think. Uh, very comfortable. But they just want to get, I think, as uh, you heard there from Tino, 160-odd. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how this is going to go with Sandeep Lamichane. Into his last over. We've seen Tim David take on those straight boundaries with uh, a fair bit of success already today. We saw Richmond Mutumbami doing the same thing for Zimbabwe last night. Yeah, excellent figures so far, isn't it, for Lamichane, as you'd expect. And hats off to Singapore, by the way, with regards to the manner that they've played him today. The Zimbabwean batsman yesterday looked to try and get after him. Mm. Lost crucial wickets at a crucial stage in the innings, at the beginning. And yesterday he was used early because Paras Gadga realized that I need to get early wickets and this is the man that can do it for me. Today, they've come out here and they've played him, knowing that he's only got four overs. Let's not give him wickets. And that's the reason why they are in such a good position. 128, halfway through the 18th over but still seven wickets in hand. Very, very key. Yeah. Now Tim David, a single to make his 50. And he gets it. Tim David with the half century. Nicely done today. Off 38 balls. But he'll want to push on. I think we can see him... Uh, Spread his wings a bit, if I can use that analogy from here on. He's been uh, exemplary. Mm. Kept the innings together. Rotated the strike in between. And the ball presented itself in areas where he can score. He did that. It's been a really good innings. And as you say, he'll want to go on from here. If he can uh, get himself to the end of the innings, I can see uh, a formidable total on the board for... Nepal to chase second time round. Little reverse there. It's gone all the way for four. And uh, yeah, frustration, I think. A little bit apparent here from some of the fielders. It's nicely played. He's got that right in between that backward point and the short third man acres of space there and we've talked about how quick the sound field is once you get it past that inner ring especially straight with the shorter boundaries guaranteed boundaries this time the conventional sweep 
Well, this has been positively slow from Singapore in comparison to what we've seen uh, recently. But it is a good bowler. 134 for three off 18. You're watching the Trident series here, of course, powered by Instarem. Wonderful tournament that we've got here in Singapore, live from the Indian Association ground. A couple of overs left here for Singapore. Avinash Bohara is on. Well, he got away with that one, didn't he? Janak trying to push at everything now. You still sticking with 160? Tough call now, but I'll stick with 160. And I think, uh, as I said, anything less than that may be a little bit of disappointment for Singapore because they've set this up really nicely. Mm. That's a couple of dots as well. It's been good for Avinash. Now that pressure just coming into your mind now, isn't it? Well, Janak knows he's got plenty of batting come. Oh, that's well bowled. Brilliant. That's really, really well bowled. Two good Yorkers. Derailing. Total of 160 <laughs> here, I think. I wonder, that? I wonder they're hearing us out there because there's maybe a little point to prove, uh, perhaps. That they want to bring it back because Nepal, they've been under the cosh a fair bit, haven't they, today? The last few overs in particular. See if they can get to even 150 now. Wow. That's identical. Absolutely brilliant. Navneeth was... Uh, Letting me know that uh, they refer to him as the Lasith Malinga of Nepal. And those last three deliveries just be proving ex he? exactly that. Yeah. Really well bowled. And, uh, this is exactly what you want at the death. Well, you needed that. Is it going to go? No. Very nicely done. Sonpal. But what an over this is. Absolutely. And Tim David will be uh, a bit irked, I think, that uh, he gets one ball at the end of the 19th over. He's chomping at the bit. I'm sure he just wants to... Well, let's see if he tries to just push this for a single. I reckon he's going to try and go out the park, yeah. Well, bald. Yeah. Really good ball to uh, finish the penultimate over. So 19 overs gone. Just the one... To complete the first innings here, 136 for three. Final over of Singapore's innings. 136 for three. Sonpal to bowl this final over. And we've just seen some excellent bowling. 
Can he continue that? Vital that he keeps the runs down here. Premeditated, of course, from Janak, who was uh, swinging away, wasn't he, in that last over? Desperate to get some kind of contact on the ball. Good work, mind you, from uh, Nepal captain, Paras Kutka, at extra cover. He'll be quite happy, I think, with uh, the manner in which the back end of this innings has gone. In one stage, it really did look like uh, Singapore were going to get comfortably past the 150 mark at the moment. They'll be quite happy with that. To go, <laughs> yeah. They're going to be struggling to get there. And, and also, uh, a good statement of intent to put Sompal on. He's taken a fair bit of stick already um, and given him the faith to, to have bowled his final over. Straight down. Just a single again. Well, they've tightened it up, haven't they? And and this is... If, if you're Nepal now, you go in at the break, keeping it to under 150, you're, you're feeling very, very pleased, given the situation it was just a few overs ago. And they'll be, uh, they'll be in a bit of a high. Absolutely. When you come out to bed, it just gives you that little bit of extra oomph. Good finish to the innings, guys. Crashed. And four. I'll be happy with that, Timothy David. Boundaries have been hard to come by in the last couple of overs at the end of this innings. This time taking advantage of that low full toss. Yeah, attempted Yorker. Didn't quite work out for him. Sompal Kami. And he was getting this sort of treatment earlier. Can they get past that 150 mark? It's just a psychological barrier, that isn't it? Bang. Oh, that was there. Again. To be hit. Oh, it's another misfield. Will it won't quite get to the boundary, though. Been a few of these. Very uncharacteristic of uh, the Nepal side. A couple of misfields today. Not quite what. Uh, we saw last night from them. Last couple of balls here. <laughs> Thought about that. Thought about that. And he's given it. Well, it could still hit your 150. Yeah, it's uh, one stroke away, isn't it? A couple of balls to go. You'll feel if he misses his mark here. Timothy David, who's been brutal on anything uh, not in the area it should be, will put it away. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. That's Wonderful what he was. Yorker. Yeah, absolutely. That's what he was trying to do earlier on. That's what we saw from Avinash as well in that previous over. So we're going to get a last ball six here from Tim David to hit 151. Not for lack of trying, I'm sure. There <laughs> we go. He hits it and he walks off. Dismissive. Tim David does it. They're definitely listening to us. I'm sure of it. They definitely are, I think. Got a little earpiece in there. Just missing that length, Yorker length that he's looking for. And uh, Tim David puts that away for that last ball six you were talking about. So 151 for three is what uh, Singapore end up on after their allotted 20 overs. I think you'll feel that uh, they'll be happy with that and possibly can defend that. So uh, a couple of contributions at the top of the innings. Rangarajan, 22 from 19. Chandra Mohan, 35 from 30. These are the partnerships that they had. And then Timothy David at the end there. Wonderful partnership. 
making sure that uh, he takes his team past that 150 mark. So there's your scorecard, uh, and it was a, a brisk start, wasn't it, from Surendran? Um, Rohan did not last too long. Timothy David, of course, played a captain's innings right at the end there with that lovely six, 64 of 44. Manpreet Singh uh, supported him, was just uh, milking the singles, and then Janak Prakash, a nice cameo towards the end. Singapore, 151 for three. And uh, what do you think? Do you think, do you think this is a, they'll be relatively happy with this? or just a I bit? I think they'll be relatively happy. Moment. If you look at Leas today, 133 is what we needed to win. Eventually did it with a couple of overs to spare. Mm. Made a really good partnership to get them into the position to win the game. So it'll be a very interesting chase, I think. We're just going to take uh, a short 10-minute break. And when we come back on the other side, we will have the run chase in the second game of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20 International Series. Powered by Instagram.
to the Indian Association ground here in Singapore. It's game two of the Singapore Tri-Nation T20 International Series powered by Instagram. And it's the second innings of the game. Singapore winning the toss and electing to bat first. 151 for three is what they ended up on. And uh, Paras Kadka, the captain on the pool, will be coming out to open the batting and see if he can lead his charges as his opposite number did in the Singapore innings to try and chase down this total and get their first victory in the series. I'm joining the commentary box again. My Shazad Huck, former Singapore cricketer. Shazad, your thoughts on this upcoming innings? Yeah, look, I just had a quick chat with um, Chamal De Silva. He's the manager for Team Singapore. Boys are in good spirits. Um, they're fairly happy with that 151. Um, I think you and I were discussing just at the end of that innings whether they'd be uh, hitting 160. Not too far from it, but as you said, just given the, the platform that they built... That they weren't just able to push on a little bit. Um, might, might, might come back and haunt them. We'll see. A couple of misfeels uh, towards the end as well from the Nepalese. As you said, uncharacteristic. Um, that gave them a couple of runs. That yielded a few runs. But uh, otherwise, I think Singapore will be relatively happy. And by the way, these guys are, have been playing some big cricket recently. So they've only just returned from Malaysia. Defeated... Canada on uh, Thursday. Ishan Pandey opening for Nepal. Made his debut for his country yesterday. What, what did you make of Nepal batting yesterday against... Uh, yeah, it Singapore? looked to me like it was a bit of a hit or miss, which is why I think 151 here, 152 to get to win the game, is uh, a bit of a tall order for them. Vinod to get Singapore started here. Well, no messing about. Just be the single. We'll bring uh, Paras Kadka, the captain, on to strike. But yeah, it just looked to me like there was no rotation of the strike in between. Something that I alluded to in the first innings really good from Singapore was let me try and get the boundary. If I don't get the boundary, I've got no other choice. And that's why I think they just lost some early wickets and, and found themselves in trouble, especially early on in the innings. No, I think it just exaggerates that situation for them now that they've got to chase. Mm. And um, it'll be interesting to see how they go about it. But I think uh, Singapore, if they put in a good performance with the ball and in the field, they'll have this one. That's wide. Not what you want from a spinner in the opening over. Um, I, I just wonder, I wanted to ask... Whether Nepal, do you think, might have been a little bit starstruck or a little bit in awe of the fact that they were playing Zimbabwe? Tries to come down to Vinot. Just a single. I, I didn't get that impression. Um, I thought that with the batting, uh, that is the way they bat. Right. Um, certainly not when they came out to field. I mean, three early wickets by Lamichani. Mm. I thought it was a really bold decision by uh, the captain, Kutka, to open the bowling with him, realized that he needed early wickets, and he was the man to do it for him. And um, after those early breakthroughs, wonderful run out to get rid of Brian Chari, who was going well mm. yesterday, very early. It really looked like um, they were playing at a level where they're comfortable. So definitely not, uh, in my opinion, starstruck. Lovely previous delivery from Vinod. Another no, see, that's what I'm talking about. No real intention to try and say, let me get, the line, get behind the ball, maybe turn it into the offside for a single or into the offside. And five deliveries gone, you haven't got a boundary, and you think, oh, no, let me just try and get some runs here. Yeah. And then play the big shot. Oh, that was close, wasn't it? It's going to end up being a four. But boy, that could have been caught in bold. And I think you're right, particularly with Ishan. He's playing his shots. They're not, he's not really looking to, to look for singles, is he? That's the thing. I think Because I think that was a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, again, just a little bit of uh, a hint that it's the big shot or nothing else. 
Really got to have a medium in between that. I might just give Vinod a bit of hope here that, and Singapore team. That's the end of the over. Nepal, seven for no loss. So far, Ishan Pandey with the only boundary so far. A little bit fortunate. Could have been a court and bold. And uh, the man who had a little entertaining cameo earlier, Janak Prakash, he's opening up from the club end. I look good. It'll be interesting to see him with the ball. <laughs> well, not the start he would have wanted. After that first delivery. <laughs> yes, exactly. But again, something that we saw last night and a little bit in the earlier innings today as well, is that when that ball is back of a length, it's got good carry through to the keeper. I thought because it's the same surface we used yesterday, and that today it might have just a bit lesser bounce, but definitely when that ball is uh, shorter in length, back of a length, good carry through to the keeper. That's more like it from Janak. Got a fair bit off this pitch. Now this is this has been an interesting pitch um, since we inaugurated this ground uh, last year. It was keeping very very low at the start. There uh, were plenty of lbs and bowls in the early days, and um, yeah, credit to the the club. It'd be interesting to hear. Sorry, yeah, you know what they've done to it because when I took a look at it for the first time yesterday, very bare. There's not a blade of grass. <laughs> not a blade of grass on the surface. Yeah, very right. dry. Yes. Clay. And I didn't expect the ball, which is why I keep making mention of the bounce. To, to come up as much I, as it, I yeah. didn't, yeah. To, yeah. To, to have that much bounce on it. So yeah. they've obviously done something. We've, we've put some concrete under it <laughs> there. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> there it is. Very dry surface, no grass whatsoever. Nandipuri clay, it, by the way. All right. I've uh, just been informed by the uh, soil experts. There you go. Taking some turn as well. Mm. Although Lamichana is really the only one who's managed to get a considerable amount of turn. Not much from the other spinners today. A little bit from Sean Williams yesterday. Doesn't look like it when he comes onto ball, but Sean Williams has got the ability to turn a ball on glass almost. Not <laughs> as much as Lamichani, but no. if there's a little bit to get out of the surface, he will do that, Sean Williams. Yeah, it has um, really changed. Made a little a few adjustments just now, Janet Prakash. Oh, beautiful. That's got to go. He does. What a ball that was, Janak Prakash. He took a long time before that delivery. This is an absolute gem. Full. He swung it back into the left-hander. Oh, and that is crashing into the middle stump. Wonderful delivery to get rid of uh, Ishan Pandey. And the first wicket falls for Nepal. Nine for one.
Next batsman in, Arif Sheikh. And that's because Hisham Pandey dismissed with a beauty from the 19-year-old Janak Prakash. Got a bright future ahead of him, this young man. Didn't travel to Malaysia. He's one of the few in this squad. Yeah, serving as a national service at the moment, as all young Singaporeans have got to do. Beautiful. Look at that. Wonderful. Not something I've often seen on this ground. And um, how how were your paces finding? Uh, did they did they get much from it yesterday? Definitely, when they bowled back of a length a little bit. Yeah. Towards the end of the innings, uh, Tendai Chitara missing his uh, Yorker mark a couple of times and decided to go to uh, the shorter, quicker deliveries. Where uh, little fishing expedition there. He's. Bowling well here, Janak Prakash. He's enjoying himself. Not easy to get uh, leave when you're in national service. So he's got to make fleeting appearances for Singapore. Got to pick and choose a little bit. Singapore doing well in that tournament. Finishing second overall. Nine for one, off two overs. Ball, that. Vinot at the far end here. Well, this is the wicket earlier on from Janak Prakash to dismiss Ishan Pandey. Four runs, by the way, from the skipper, Paras Kadka. I mean, they've, they've put themselves in a difficult position here. You were already talking about Ishan Pandey going for his shots. He was out early on. Captain's got to stand up and deliver here. Yeah, you'll feel that uh, Paras Kadka has got to bet and be there for the majority of this run chase if uh, Nepal are going to get anywhere close. It's called doing a Timothy David, I think. Exactly that. <laughs> exactly that. If there's anything he'll take from Timothy David today, it's a leaf out of his book and the manner in which he batted. Looking to get on with things, down the wicket, wants to take advantage of those short, straight boundaries. They're certainly looking at every, every ball to try and turn it into a boundary. It looks like at the moment. I um, haven't seen that many singles yet. Yeah, that's uh, the approach that I saw yesterday. Yeah. And uh, didn't serve them well, though. It didn't, indeed. We're hoping that today they can try and get a few more singles and doubles in between those boundaries they're looking for. That's he adjusted. nicely played. Just himself beautifully. And that is the first six for Nepal. 
They seem to be really only dealing in those kind of uh, shots. Beautifully done. Inside out. Yeah, he's gone inside the line of the ball and just lifted it over that man at uh, mid-off. Quality stroke. Yep. He's frustrated with himself. I don't think that's such a bad thing. He's got the wide. Extra run. Extra delivery. Last ball in the over. He can still manage to get something out of this. Well, and he does. Loves that extra cover area, Paras And this time, inside out again. Taking advantage of those wide open spaces outside the 30-man circle. Three overs gone, 24 for one. There's the equation for you. 139 required from 104. Straight to the man at 45. Good work in the field. He'll be disappointed. He's the only man behind square on the onside. Mm. And he's hit it straight to him. I like how he's bowling, Janak Prakash. Beautiful shape. That's the line. You were asking about the surface last night and how it played and today in the seamers. Definitely when they've pitched the ball up. Especially with the newer ball. They've got a little bit of shape. Tendai Chitara did that with the new ball yesterday. Neville Madziva did it as well. Definitely just a bit of shape when the guys pitch the ball up. Less today because possibly the humidity levels not as high as they were yesterday. Yeah, it has been uh, very humid around uh, Singapore, of course. We've had the good old haze in the last few weeks. That's a wide again. He's had a couple of these. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, the weather hasn't been conducive, I have to say, um, for anything, really. A lot of sports events have been curtailed. And, thankfully, we are at the, uh, the end of it, it appears. I think you guys brought in the good weather for us, so thank you. Well, we're only here for a few more days, so we might we take it home with us. <laughs> Yeah, this series, of course, is on tomorrow. There's a, a one-day break, and then we are back on from Tuesday to Thursday. And if you're around, do come down to the IA ground. And a very warm welcome to all our viewers around the world. I know this is attracting a lot of attention uh, for Nepal. So a very warm welcome to our Nepali viewers. I know there's a, a sense of revenge uh, after Singapore beat them at this very ground as well, not too long ago. And Janak, by the way, had a superb catch, which has gone viral. I'm sure you can uh, put that on YouTube or on Google and you'll find it. It's an absolutely incredible catch. This man right here. Well, that's a nice shot. Quick outfield. It won't be quick enough to get to the boundary. The man at uh, deep back with square leg making his way around to Kyle Corner. A nicely timed shot. And this is what I'm talking about. I need to see more of. Nice clip off the legs. A couple of runs. Scoreboard ticks over. Not this uh, hit or miss that we've seen a lot of from Nepal. 
Yeah, I think it's uh, a little bit better now in that sense. Pretty good over so far from Janak. I'm sure he's got a point or two to prove as well after missing out on that recent tournament in Malaysia. I like the look of uh, Arif Sheikh. Looks organized. Good technique. Good defense. Looks a very compact player. And of course, once you've got those fundamentals, then you can always branch out and be a more exciting player, play your strokes. Mm. But you need that foundation first. Yeah, he's been watchful, hasn't he? Two off eight. He's also been up against Janak. Oh, ho, ho. well, he went for it. Not all that far away. End of the over. 27 for one. So, the skipper brings himself on, Tim David. Right arm off spinner. Starts off nicely. It's cramping him up for room there, Paras Katka. That's a bit of a hoik, but it does the job. Yeah, he's just held that back, hasn't he? And that's the reason why the hoik. I think he probably wanted to go straighter mm. because the ball was uh, held back so much. Ended up going across the line because the ball didn't get there as soon as he thought it would. Now, Arif Sheikh, we talked about him earlier being uh, watchful. You, Tino likes the way he approaches things and... Just that bit of, bit of pressure building up on him now. It's another dot. Comes from a great height as well from Tim, doesn't it? Sneaky. Just a little pause in the action, <laughs> making sure that um, he gives himself the best opportunity to see anything the batsman is thinking of doing. We saw that. Down the wicket, maybe. We saw that earlier, didn't we? Ishan Pandey tried to premeditate. Yeah, he's, he's a man who looks like he's under pressure, but that will help his cause. Just about kept that in. He'll be disappointed with that misfield. Mm. The ball's gone straight to him. Just releasing a little bit of the pressure. So, end of the over, 30 for one off five, and we'll ha have a change of commentary. Nafneet Krishna and James Magallion. Thank you, Shez. Thank you, Tino. James, welcome to the commentary box. Thank you. 
good to me. Chasing 152. What's good to see today is the application and the intent of the captain, Paras Katka. We saw him being a little wayward and reckless with some of his shots yesterday, but there is clear intent today. And it's probably because of who the opposition is, Singapore. And we saw what happened the last time these two teams met, James. That's right, yes. Um, Paras is clearly uh, experienced, uh, played a lot of internationals. And, um, you know, he, he, he knows also his cricket. Just watch this ball here. Well played through mid-wicket. Probably pick up. Fantastic piece of fielding there. It, the boundary line on the leg side certainly saved his team two runs. And that's the kind of application that you need from every single player on the field. You can sense that there is something in the air about this game. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, as, as I said, Paras has uh, played a lot of cricket. I think he probably sees that he, he probably will need to bat through. Somebody needs to, to make a, a, a statement where they're batting through and people can bat round him. And I think he's that man that can do the job. Absolutely. They will need him to lead from the front. The ball is going to run back again. They will need him to lead from the front just the way Captain Tim Davids did captaining his side for the very first time and what a knock he played right till the very end finishing off the innings with a massive blow over long on and paris would love to follow suit exactly yeah exactly okay arif is uh, gonna hopefully support paris through his uh, through their partnership he's looking good in the center today is paris so this is the, the last over of the power play, I gather, yeah, so they'll be looking to score as much as they can with the infield set. So uh, beyond that, we'll see um, their strategy. James, you've obviously spent a little more time with the Singapore team, having spent ample amount of time coaching some of the youngsters here at the Singapore Cricket Association. Talk to us a little bit about some of the players here. We have heard so much about Janak Prakash and very impressive in the little that I saw of him with the ball and he was pretty quick as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, currently coaching for the uh, SCA Junior Girls squad. That's a great shot to mid-wicket. Found the gap. Well, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of Nepali fans watching this broadcast at the moment and they'll be very happy with the way their captain is leading the charge here. Uh, flicked off his pads with utmost ease and that raced away to the square leg boundary for four runs. And they certainly are on the move on Nepal. 36 for one into the sixth over. Much better performance than what we saw yesterday. Yeah, having wickets in hand is going to be crucial during these middle overs. I think we saw that with Singapore's innings how uh, Tim David uh, navigated the strike, uh, in, you know, interspersed with sixes and you know, got them to a score, probably maybe 10 short of what they wa realistically wanted, but uh, it was a great finish to get that six off the last ball. So 150 c they can defend. And um, in reply, you know, Nepal, have, have, you know, they're well set, one, only one wicket down and um, 36 on the board. So it's, it's a well set up for both teams to take advantage. Wide outside off and Arif will be absolutely livid with himself and you can see the expression on his face. In fact, that was Paris, my apologies. That was asking to be hit. Obviously, no one on the boundary line on the offside. Any sort of contact would have probably meant that the ball racing away to the boundary line on the offside, square off the wicket, well, wasn't meant to be. But you can see the intent on Paris's face, on his eyes. You can see that they certainly want to win this game and settle a score against Singapore. Okay, well worked to mid-wicket for one. 
Quite a good start from Sedant there. Only six off the over. Six overs completed. End of the power play. Nepal 37 for one. You're watching live coverage, live visuals of the game number two of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20 International coming to you from the Indian Association here in Singapore. And we have a decent crowd in today. And it's obviously because the home team Singapore is playing today, James, good to see a crowd in on a Saturday evening. Very much so, yes. And, you know, the publicity that uh, the national team have been getting from uh, over the last six months has, uh, you know, been fantastic, not only playing well on the field but the the whole idea of streaming games is just bringing a new fan base to Singapore cricket I think it's fantastic and you can see it in an in a evening like this where there are so many people around the ground in the last I checked there were over 7,000 folks joining in via Facebook as well so it's good to see people tuning in from around the world well that's great you know Singapore uh, is is really making its mark in uh, international cricket and it's making waves and uh, you can see just uh, just by the the level of interest people sending goodwill messages to the team for the upcoming series that the great shot there and Paris Katka steps down the track and hoiks one over long on for six handsome runs used his Th feet very well there got to the pitch clean strike over mid over mid on there's just been so much conviction in his innings today. Paris Katka, 30 of 19. Confidence right down the track. And no hesitation in going over long on. He knew there was a fielder there. Was happy taking him on. And he greets the new bowler, Salador Vijay Kumar, with a six of his very second delivery. That's good. Very good experience cricket from Paras there. Six off the first ball. Just picking up a single. Just to move along the strike. Interchange the, the batter. So that, again, the bowler has to think about where to bowl. And it was exactly this that was missing yesterday. Just application from their batsmen. They lost plenty of wickets in the first 10 overs. And as a result, couldn't put much on the board. And we see exactly the opposite today. Into the seventh over, just the one wicket down. Gives them the opportunity to rotate the strike. Play the odd boundary as well. Essentially exactly what you need to chase down 150. Yes, and I was looking back at the, the scores between the two sides in the World Cup qualifier game in July, end of July. And, you know, bowl, I think they were bowled out for just a tad over 100 and, uh, you know, they probably learned from that match as well, how to pace the, the, particularly the game, the wicket. Very poor bowling here from Vijay Kumar. Drifting down the leg side and easy pickings for Arif Sheikh here. All he had to do was get some sort of bat on that and it raced away past the short fine leg fielder for four runs. Yes, great over from Nepal's perspective. Uh, 13 and uh, keeping them well on track to, to uh, you know, still a big score to get, but uh, on track. They have wickets in hand as well, which is going to be key at the back end of this game. And a Nepal fan watching this will be happy with the fact that they still have the Pender Singh Ivory, Sompal Kami, Binod Bandari and Karan Kesi to come. They all certainly can bat and, and contribute with plenty of runs. But it's that man, the number two, on that list, Paras Katka, who will have to lead from the front if Nepal will have to see this through. 106 required in the remaining. So uh, tell me, the, the starting 11 from yesterday to today, ha have they made many changes? Just the one change. Sushan Bari comes in in place of Sandeep Jora. And uh, generally speaking, it's, it's a young, relatively youthful team that uh, Paris has brought with him? Absolutely. Plenty of big names missing. Sharat Vesavkar, Gyanendra Malla, the ever so experienced Basant Regmi as well. 
And so an opportunity for the youngsters, obviously Kushal Malla, Ishan Pandey making their debuts in this tournament. So it's great to see that an opportunity like this Agreed, yeah. provides the platform for the future of Nepal cricket. And while we say that, well, that a that change in the bowling yeah, that's for Singapore, Anand Krishna comes on. That turned quite a bit, that first ball. What are they going to get here? Ah, oh, look what happened there. Concede another run, not required at this stage. Singapore letting this slip slowly, you would have to say. The last four to five overs certainly belong to Singapore, uh, to Nepal. Yeah, 102 off 78. They, uh, they, they would probably see themselves as slightly uh, ahead now uh, in that sense. And the, the next five overs could be crucial for the, I guess, the, the destination of this game. I would imagine that uh, Singapore really n would probably need to uh, get wickets and quite quickly to really put get the pressure that they had on for the first sort of four to five overs. Krishna in the game. Paros once again. That's Is there a chance here? Falls right in between three fielders. Well, the rub of the green going in the way of the captain of Nepal. He was looking for that expansive drive over covers for six runs. Didn't make good contact. And for a split second, he probably felt that was going straight down the throat of a fielder. But the good news for a Nepal fan, that didn't happen. Guess what? Makes good contact this time. Six runs. Short straight boundaries. Well, it didn't matter if this ground was any bigger because that went well over the boundary line. And Paras Katka has raced on to 42 now in just 25 deliveries. Tournament sixes, 18. It's been, uh, been a phenomenal uh, evening for sixes and uh, I don't think that will be the last that we see of them, particularly if uh, Paris stays in for any longer. Well, he's taking a liking for the spinners for sure. First Vijay Kumar and now Anand Krishna. And Paras Katka is dispatching them with ease. Yes, you think uh, they've had uh, the spinners on for quite a few overs now that the skipper may well think to turn back to some seam bowling. Where's that gone? Four, six? Six again. Is that another six? Yes, it is. Let's take another look at this. Short. shot this time and he pulls it over mid-wicket region. Another six. On to the members stand there. Much to the disappointment of the local Singapore fans who have made their way on a Saturday evening here to this ground. Paras Katka is doing this in grand style. Yeah, that's the length he should be bowling. He should be bowling a bit further up and um, forcing the guy on the front foot. But uh, two short balls there which have uh, been dispatched. 8 overs completed, 66 for 1. A 66 for one at the end of eight overs. Solid start from Nepal here. And Arif Sheikh happy to play second fiddle to Paras here, James. Uh, yes, no, ex exactly. You, you know, you just rotate the strike. Um, you don't leave it all on Paris's shoulders, but you just take pressure off him by getting the singles and um, making the bowlers think. Too short there. He just looks so much at ease. You can see he's very confident. There's a spring in his stride. He knows he can do this. He wants to see him steam through. And this is a good solid statement being sent by the captain.
credit where it's due and credit to Arif Sheikh. James, you pointed out these very happy rotating strike. And what that does is there's no pressure on Paris when he comes back. Correct, correct, yeah. You, you know, three singles off his over. That's okay as far as Paris is concerned. You know, another couple of singles, even a boundary. He, he knows that he's got a good partner in, in Arif. Interesting to see what Tim Davids does. Well, he's made to think in his very first game as captain. The spinners obviously aren't working out. Vijay Kumar expensive so far. 17 he's gone for in the 1.4 overs. Anand Krishna got a bit of the stick in the previous over. And this is an excellent over. Yes, it may just be five singles, but Nepal will take it at the moment. Celador back in for his last ball of the over. Hitting the square. And he's found the bounce. He's pierced the, the outfield. So, yes, again, four singles and a four. Five singles and a four, forgive me. So, that's exactly what uh, Paris and Paris have been probably strategizing. Singles, rotate the strike. With the boundary be to be hit, go for it. With everything that's happening, it looks like we've missed Paris' half century. Captain leading from the front, 54 not out in just 30 deliveries. And we kept saying that someone will need to play what, will need to do what Tim Davids did. And it probably looks like Paras has won up on him. Yes, he's uh, 54 of 30. He's a very good strike rate. Um, there's still plenty of overs to go. And uh, if he's there at the end, I think uh, Nepal can be probably taking home the plaudits. It's going to be very interesting to see how Singapore pull themselves back in this game. They will need to change things around a little bit. They seem to be a little more threatening when the seamers were on with the new ball in the first few overs. Agreed. But it almost feels like they've loosened the grip with the spinners coming on in the last few overs, James. You're right, yes. I mean, it just seems like uh, we need to have something that stirs, stirs things up a bit. There's, uh, there's been very little chances given... Maybe one half chance. But it Good. seems all too easy there. Four runs, I think, is it? Yeah, it seems all too easy now at this uh, this stage. And uh, I think Tim needs to think about changing things up, you know, forcing a change, get Paris and Arif thinking. At the moment, they, they, they seem to know how to play out and over. Singles and fours, it's gaps everywhere. It's What's good to see, there's plenty of interest on social media as well. Fans around the world following live action here from the Singapore Tri-Nations T20i. Folks watching this, if you have questions for us, we'd be happy to take them. If you can have the hashtag Singapore Tri-Nation while you tweet. Big one! Take that! Six more from Paras Katka. He moves into the 60s. The captain is putting on a show here on a Saturday evening in Singapore. It's raining sixes at the Indian Association. And Paras Katka is sending a strong statement to the Singapore team. That's great uh, for his uh, younger teammates to see uh, him play like this. Uh, as we know, they sent over a young team to Singapore. And to see this uh, Parrish leading from the front, um, controlling the innings, is, uh, can only be good for the younger guys. Six more once again! Well... All Anand Krishna is doing is bowling length deliveries and Paras Katka says thank you. Take that straight down the track. Easy peasy for the captain. Oh boy, oh boy, does he look... He seems to be in sublime form. Paras Katka is striking well over 200 now. And yeah. suddenly it's looking a lot easier for Nepal. True. It feels like a very different batting lineup from the one that turned up last evening. 
Paris must be uh, uh, having to go somewhere early, I guess. The, the way he's striking, he's just uh, he's thinking, I need to get this game finished over and done with as soon as possible. 60 off 62. That's, it's uh, really their game to lose, Nepal. What is Tim Brady going to do now with his bowlers? Two more balls of this over. We've already seen some tweets coming in on hashtag Singapore Tri Nation. We'll be happy to take some of your questions, read some of the best tweets coming up as well. Wonderful engagement on social media. And a big thank you to the Singapore Cricket Association for making this happen. It's great to see three evenly balanced teams battle it out. As we come to the end of the 10th over, right at the halfway mark, 94 on the board. This is a comprehensive performance thus far by the Nepali batsmen. And Paras has got 67 of them. Yeah, I think uh, Singapore probably weren't expecting to be uh, pushed around so easily. It's, I mean, it's a learning experience in one sense, if you can think of it that way. Uh, they've played really well this last six months. Uh, played a lot of good cricket. And, um, you know, coming up against someone like Paras in form like that, um, yeah, it's tough, but that's uh, that's elite, elite cricket, and, it, and if any country wants to move up the level, you, you really need to uh, you know experience the good and the, the not so good. Take your hat off to Paris, though, for it so far. Right at the halfway mark, there also means a change in the commentary box as well. Shakar Batrai says it's raining sixes at Singapore. Are we looking at a maiden T20 century for Paris? Only time will tell. But for now, a change in the commentary box, and it's going to be Tino and Adrian to take you through the next five hours. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Exciting times here at... Uh, the Indian Association ground in Singapore, 94 for one after 10 overs. The captain of Nepal, Paras Kadka, has decided that uh, he wants to get on with things. 67 from just 33 balls. 58 runs required from 60. And as long as Paras Kadka is out there, Nepal will feel that... Um, they're in with a good shout. He's in quite a hurry, isn't he? The Nepalese captain tonight. Huge, huge sixes. Sedan comes into bowl. Just a single there. Very impressed by Arif Sheikh. 18 from 22, and he's been very happy to just play second fiddle. Give the strike to the captain, who is in sublime form this evening. That's what we were Not talking. the pirate Kaska we saw yesterday. We were talking about earlier on if he can take a leaf out of the book of his counterpart, Tim David, and he's done exactly that. No run there, as his captain sends him back. We saw something similar earlier in the innings um, when Singapore were batting, how Tim David, and it's a non-striker's end, just, you know, supporting, building his innings slowly. But once again, it's, the, it's been a day of the captain, hasn't it? A night for the captains here at the Indian Association ground. As Paras looks to finish this off, single good running important to make sure that in between all those big hits when the opportunities are there to get to the other side take some quick singles they do that 56 from 56 run a ball from here on in really important that Paras Kadka in particular stays out there as long as possible 
certainly been leading from the front, hasn't he, Captain? Nice shot. Really nicely played. Just opened the face, did uh, Arif Sheikh. And aware that the man at third man is rather fine. And it's a short boundary. So all he had to do was get it past that man at backward point. And the ball was racing away. Moves on to 23. He may be playing second fiddle, but, you know, he's now got to move on. Supporting his captain well. As Paras just times his innings to perfection. Huge. Is he gone? Chance. He's dropped him. Dropped him. Brings up the 100. For Nepal, 101 for one at the end of the 11th. Always talk about how important partnerships are in any form of cricket. And this one, 92 from just 57 balls. Paras Kadka leading the onslaught for Nepal. 101 for one now. Looking good for uh, the win. Registering their first win of this interim Tri Nation series. Good ball, straight through. As Janak Prakash comes back to bowl his third over. Been brilliant, started off with that wicket. They need some more magic from him, the 19 year old. Tim David needs a plan here, doesn't he? I mean, at the way the, at that Paras Kodka is going, this, could game, this game could be over really soon. down should just be a single absolutely right he needs a plan he needs to get a wicket more importantly he needs to get the wicket of uh, his opposite number not the easiest of surfaces to come out and start scoring runs quickly on what they have done well is they've brought that rate right down it's just under 5.8 now so that's manageable, even if they do start to lose wickets. Cut away. That's a good shot. There's a man back on the boundary. Keep it to two. Yeah, just 48 from 51 needed now. But how well has the captain played tonight? I mean, just those sixes which we've seen in the first half before we came on. Incredible. Leading from the front, as we saw with Tim David. So Paris, well, he's in a rush to get out of here, isn't he? Out to the man at uh, Sweeper on the offside. Another single to the total. Paris Kutka moves on to 71. Very quickly made runs. Janak Prakash been good. 2.4 overs. 1 for 9. He's the go-to man for Tim David. Got to try and get a wicket here. Only a single there. He's looked good as well, hasn't he, Janak Prakash? Got that early wicket. But since then, it's all been Paras Kodka as he moves into the 70s. It's a completely different batting performance since, um, that we saw yesterday to Nepal today. It's um, 
more controlled, composed, only playing the balls to perfection. The shot, sele the shot selection has been on point. Yeah, when I saw 150 on the board, I thought this was going to be uh, a tall order for Nepal at the moment. And they're doing it uh, at a canter. End of the 12th over, 101 for 6. 106 for 1, sorry. Big heave ho. And he's going to get four. There's two men back on the leg side boundary. Manages to dissect them perfectly. And a good start to the over. Arif Sheikh, he moves uh, on to 30 from 29. Just 42 required now from 47 balls. Nepal looking strong. Excellent shot there by the 21-year-old. As he gets to 30. Not being in the spotlight as much as his captain, but just moving along slowly, keeping the total ticking. It's a nice shot there. As he gets back. That's the captain take over now. It's important for both Paras Kadka and Arif Sheikh to take the team home in these situations. Very easy. Brings up the 100 partnership between the two. 102 from 65. And very easy to think we're almost there. Not take the team across the line. Somebody else comes in and does that for you. That uh, crucial stage is shot over extra cover. We know how strong he is in that area. Paras Kadka puts this one away comfortably. It's almost like he knows exactly where the fielders are placed, and he's, he's picking his gaps to perfection, just dissecting the field. He goes to 75 now. Arif Sheikh on 31. Nepal 115 for one. Just 37 runs required from 45 deliveries. Again, taking advantage of those vacant open spaces at extra cover. Paras Kadka is going like a train. Giving himself some room. Allowing himself to open up and hit that ball through that offside. He moves on to 79 from just 40 balls. Could there be a maiden T20 I 100 for him here tonight? Gone! Straight back over the top for six. And Paras Kadka moves on to 85. The team moves on to 125. And he means business. The captain seriously does mean business. I mean, he's been targeting Sedan. That's. Three fours and a six off this over. As you rightly said, he moves to 85. It's just 27 needed now from 43 balls. It has been uh, an amazing knock from this man. How could he finish this off? Really needs a wicket here, Siddhant. 
And this time to the man on the leg side boundary. Will just be one. Very, very good over. 19 from it. 20 from it. 126 for one. Right, glad to be back in the commentary box with Adrian. Thank you, Tino. And with just 26 required in seven overs, well, this game's going only one way. It certainly is, and it's, there's only one man who's been doing a lot of talking tonight, actually, with the bat, Paras Kadka, 86 now from 42. At this rate, this match will get over very, very quickly. Uh, just over 7,000 watching on Facebook, and that's well over 11,000 now. So plenty of fans tuning in to watch live coverage of this tournament. That's great to see. And it's probably because of that man on your screen. And there's only the second match of the tournament as well. Keeping in mind, this is um, Tim David's first match as captain. Not the note he would want to start off with, having done so well with the bat. But it's its opposite number doing all the talking tonight. Yeah, and interesting to see all the comments coming in on hashtag Singapore Tri Nation. Keep those tweets coming in. Love to see plenty of praise for Paras Katka at the moment. No surprises. He's the talk of the town at the moment. And it doesn't matter if it's leg spin, off spin, the medium pacers. He's taking them all. And let's talk about Arif Sheikh. Have a look at that. 32 of 31. He's striking at better than runner ball. And it almost feels like he wasn't even in the center. Exactly. I mean, we, we, uh, we were just talking about this earlier. He's going about things very slowly, but he's composed, you know. He's just there supporting his captain, getting on with the job, letting Paras do the majority of striking. Going once again, uh, goes over long on, six more. Well, it continues, doesn't it? It doesn't matter, like I said, whether it's the pavilion end or the far end, or the leg spin or the off spin or the medium pacers, Paras Katka is taking them on today. It is a Paras Katka show, ladies and gentlemen. Seven runs away from his maiden T20 I 100 here, the captain. And the fact that he played that with a horizontal bat, Fantastic. Ah, they're doing this in a canter. 39 balls remaining. My sense is this is going to be over in the next two, three overs if he continues the same way. Good change of pace there by Ari Manuchil. He looks for another plan. Tim David definitely needs a breakthrough here. And he needs that man, his opposite number, number 77, Paras Khadka, 93 of just 46 deliveries. Goes down the ground, quick single. Well, there are plenty of Singapore fans who have made their way here today, but unfortunately, it's a bit quiet at the moment because this match is well... In favor of Team Nepal at the moment, 14 overs completed, 135 for one.
Right, the big question. Can Paris Kartka get to three figures? It's going to be his counterpart, Timothy David, to bowl at him. He's going to fancy his chances with the short boundaries. 94 he's batting on. Is that going to be it? No. One, two. Is he going to come back for two? No, just the single. Moves on to 95 and with 17 required. He'll probably say he'll get his century, yeah? I mean, he should, but Timothy David, we, we've said this, excellent with the bat. Can he work some magic with the ball here? The captain coming on to ball. Well, there's not much you can do when, when a batsman comes at you that hard, right? And I'm trying to wonder from Tim's perspective as to what they could have done differently. It almost felt like it didn't matter to Paris Kartka because he kept hitting them. As he comes into bowl now. It's gone. Four more. Well, he's going to make things a little more interesting for Paris Kartka now with Arif Sheikh getting a boundary. 36 of 32. The signs of maturity, just the temperament shown from Arif Sheikh gives Paris so much more confidence, doesn't it? It certainly does. And uh, we've seen that. You know, he's just going about slowly with his innings. Oh... It's an absolute beauty from the captain. Yeah, absolute there's still ripper. plenty of bounce on offer for the spinners as well. No run there. You probably think that Arif is happy to play out the over, Adrian? Yes, yes, he is. And um, just, it's just a really mature innings from the 21-year-old. Really supporting his captain. Bit of confusion there. But single. As a man who's done everything tonight. Take strike. He's got a ball left in this over. Do you think he'll finish it and get his century tonight? Or will we see a little bit more? Well, I'm not going to put it past him with everything that he's done today. I'm not going to put it past him. Timothy David is going to take a second attempt at it now. Here we go. There you go, big one! Century for Paris Katka. Up comes the bat from the captain of Nepal. And boy, oh boy, has he sent a statement to Singapore. We knew it the second he stepped onto the field today. There was an intent. There was... He knew he wanted to get this done. And what a show he's put on for everyone here at the Indian Association in Singapore. Take a bow, Paris Katka. You absolute beauty. Incredible hitting from the Nepalese captain tonight. Seeing it like a football out there. There's no, no answers for any of the Singaporean bowlers tonight as Paras gets his maiden T20 I-100. People of Singapore, yes, the match hasn't gone their way, but they've been treated to batting of the highest quality. Arif Sheikh, 37 of 35, but Paras Katka has stolen the limelight. 101 of just 49 deliveries. Heading towards an early finish here. Just five required. And for Paris Katka, that's just one delivery. End of the 15th over. Oh no, still going. <laughs> Start. Start of the 16th, in fact. <laughs> Thought we were done. Just real maturity shown by Arif Sheikh tonight. Application, maturity, and that was the need of the hour, and that was exactly what Ryan Burl and Mutum Bami did yesterday. Yep. Match-winning partnership got them past the line. And that's exactly what these two have done today. Arif Sheikh and Paras Karka. Direct. Excellent piece of fielding. Direct hit, but it's not going to single. Just four required now of 28 deliveries. Well, we've been treated to some excellent cricket tonight. First with the, um, the captain, Tim David. And now his opposite number. Can he finish it? I'm just, reading out some of the just reading out some of the tweets that I'm seeing for 
Hashtag Singapore Tri Nation, Bipul Butterai says, Paras Katkan now has both the first ODI and T20I century for Nepal on his name. Well batted, boss. Certainly well batted. I'm sure he's waiting to see Nepal play some test cricket so he can set a record there as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, this man has quite a following back in Nepal and he's treated the Nepal cricket fans this evening. What a show he's put on. Just four required now. And that's the beauty of this tri-series, tri tri isn't it? Nepal lost to Zimbabwe yesterday, getting the better of Singapore today. Well, once they get these three runs, very difficult to pick one from these three teams and that's what's making this interesting and very intriguing. Quick single there. I'm just looking at Paras Kadka's strike rate here. He's striking at 200, nine sixes and six boundaries. 200. At some point, the size of this ground was going to come into play. Exactly. Paras Kadka has taken full advantage of the short straight boundaries. He's used the long levers. He obviously has a good reach. And he took on the fast bowlers initially and then the spinners in the middle overs. And he's doing it to the medium pesos once again towards the end. And Arif Sheikh has gone about his business slowly. Still managed five boundaries, but growing it around the ball. Singapore have had absolutely no answers and plenty for the new captain, Tim Davids, to go back and think about. What are the changes that he will need to be doing? Because they're up against a confident-looking Zimbabwe team tomorrow. And that is a boundary, and that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. A convincing win for Nepal, coming back strongly after an ordinary evening last evening.